So back to the breaking news. The war is back on now. If you've been following us for the last hour or so, the U.S. pressing for a new ceasefire deal, but not at the moment. The Israeli defense forces are back operating in Gaza. The truce is done. The family of one of the remaining hostages is now praying for the return of their son. He is 19-year-old Itai Shen, an active duty IDF soldier and a U.S. Israeli citizen. He was serving with a tank unit near Gaza on the morning of the 7th of October, has not been heard from since. His father is Ruby. Uh, he's been back and forth to Washington, D.C., trying to bring his own son home. And Ruby, thank you for your time today. We're, tr yeah, we're trying, Ruby, to get the, the message out here today. Um, it's a couple of things I want to know Bill. from you. Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah. yeah, you bet. You say, get the hostages and then get Hamas at all costs. For the fate of your 19-year-old teenage son, when was the last time you heard from him? It was that Black Saturday morning that we heard from him last, and since then, nothing, no sign of life. And we have met constantly the international-led costs, and we have been asking them. Part of the agreement that has been signed is that Hamas is supposed to provide them access to the remaining hostages, hostages that have gun wounds, that have amputated limbs, that have broken bones, that require immediate medical attention. We are happy for those that have been united with their family, but those that have been left behind are dying each day without that medical attention. And I ask, where is the international lead cost? Ruby. Based on international law, who is allowed to meet with the hostages? So, uh, according to the international law, the International Red Cross has a permanent mandate to visit hostages. If I could, Bill, just quote you the mission statement of the International Red Cross to protect the lives and dignity of victims in armed conflict and violence and provide them with assistance. When you look at the budget of the International Red Cross, 25 percent of it comes from U.S. taxpayers. I am a U.S. taxpayer. Why is it that the International Red Cross has not visited my son, a U.S. citizen, as well as the other hostages that require immediate medical attention? The question is fair, sir. I'm wondering what the Israeli government can provide you on that, or, or is the reality here that Hamas just operates in its own silo, and they are controlling all of this for the hostages today? The international red cross are the ones that need to be the conscious of the international community. They are the ones that are seeing the hostages the minute that they are released, and they are coming back filthy, insect bites with starvation, and they are not telling the world how the hostages are being treated. It sounds very much, Bill, unfortunately, like the Holocaust, where, again, the international community and the Red Cross did not share with the world what has happened. And only in the aftermath was the world aware of the horrific things that happened in the Holocaust. Where is the international red cost? Why are they keeping quiet? Why are they not stating the status of the victims? And why are they not stating that they are not allowed access by Hamas to visit the hostages that are left behind that require immediate medical attention? Why are yeah, they I not saying to the world questions. exactly yeah. what's yeah. happening? And I can hear it in your voice. Today's the 1st of December. We're coming up on two, two months of your son's captivity. Uh, and I know you're in Washington to put pressure on U U.S. officials to go ahead and get your answers. I don't know if it's been much consolation for you in Washington, D.C., but maybe I can ask you this question. Do you believe that this U.S. government is doing as best as it possibly can for your family and for the Israeli military that's trying to eliminate Hamas today? So we've been having constant conversations with the Biden administration from the highest levels, from the president to the vice president. We met yesterday uh, Jake Sullivan, 
again, that provided us as much insight as he can about the negotiations going on. We also met senators that are from both sides of the aisle. We believe that it is important to keep this a bipartisan issue as much as possible. And we've been getting support. Last uh, Yesterday, we met Senator Cruz. We met Senator Lindsey Graham. And they also wish to provide their support to solve this issue as soon as possible. But the bottom line, Bill, okay, is that there are eight U.S. hostages being held in captivity for 56 days. I'm a business guy. I look at the bottom line. And unfortunately, that is the bottom line as we speak after 56 days. Yeah. We had Thanksgiving Sir, thank last week, time. Bill, time yeah. of family being yeah. together. We had an mm -hmm. empty chair at the table. Christmas wow. is coming up. We don't want to have an empty chair again. The U.S. government needs I, to do whatever it can, negotiate whatever it can to get the hostages back out, especially the U.S. hostages. I can't imagine what you're going through. Uh, listen, stay strong, stay brave. Thank you for sharing your story today. And I know the only consolation for you in the end is when your 19-year-old son comes home and walks through that door again. So we pray for that. Thank you, Bill. To come back. And again, the U.S. government needs to do whatever it can to leverage the international Red Cross to go out and do its job. Its job is to go out and visit those hostages and provide medical attention. They pay 25% yeah. of the budget. They should make that happen. Understood. We'll see if you get that. And we'll stay on it. Ruby, thank you for your time today. We'll stay in contact.